Ammo is crazy expensive and hard to find, and dry fire is life. I use the Mantis X10 to keep my handgun skills strong, and it makes dry practice fun and challenging. Check it out at the link below. Hey guys, Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. This is Mantis Dry Fire Mondays, and you're on Active Self-Protection Extra. Welcome. Uh, I'm hitting a topic that is very big, and there's no way to do this justice in 15 minutes. So those of you with a short attention span, you're probably out. I understand uh, this video could easily be an hour long. It covers a lot of information, but you have a lot of people ask for this information, so we're going to give it. What we're going to talk about is the difference between concealment variations and accessing the gun. I taught a video on getting your support hand on quicker, getting the gun out, out of the holster quicker, and then we worked on absolute hand speed, which was the difference between absolute hand speed at appendix and strong side was about a tenth. So it wasn't a huge difference. We got three ways that we can draw a gun. I'm going to do the first one here. You guys have got me standing in a jacket in June in the middle of Georgia. So this is a sacrifice for y'all. I hope it's worth it. All right. This is called an open front concealment garment. Uh, it's the only one I have. I don't tend to use these very often. I don't have a fishing vest and I don't have uh, any type of shirt that would be considered for this. But I'm going to use this so you guys can see. If I carry my gun strong side around the hip, I'm not going to carry it any further than 330 backwards because the further I get back, the harder it is for me to access. The more it conceals from me and the less it conceals from people behind me. So I'm going to put the gun where I can get to it. It's very hard on the shoulder to drive behind you. Uh, if you do a lot of repetitions, you will end up injuring your shoulder at some point. So you need to be extremely careful with that, that motion. What I want to do here is that I'm either going to start with the hands up or the hands down. Okay. doesn't matter. That's how real world is. Uh, I don't start with my thumbs next to my sides like they require in competition. And somehow that's gotten into the tactical world. I walk around and with my hands are crossed or naturally down or hands up. And then what I'm going to do is go and get the gun. The fastest position for this is hands up. One hand comes to the solar plexus. The other hand rakes it out. The other hand comes to the gun and I'm able to get the gun out. Let's make sure we're working with a safe gun here. Good. Now remember the holsters I'm using are not really set up for these positions, but I'm doing the best I can with the gear I've got. So if I stand in this position, my hands are up, rake it out of the way, go get the gun and come back out. This is a pretty quick draw stroke. A lot of people have settled on this. This one tends to be about a 1.2 on the Manus for me. Now what's different about me and the rest of you is I'm probably, I have a greater data pool. All right. Not that I'm the greater shooter or whatever that is. I am a clinician by heart. If I was a medical doctor, it means I'd be working with clients all the time. So I see roughly a couple thousand students a year at national conferences, competitions, coming through classes. So I get to see these metrics just repeated over and over, and I have a pretty good idea for what the averages is. And if if my techniques aren't effective, I know almost instantaneously, and you know it costs me clients. So I've got to be very cutting edge about what I'm doing, and I can't have a strong opinion because people are going to end up in different places, and I've got to adjust and meet them. For me, if I was going to give a speech and I had to dress appropriately with a jacket, this is how I'm going to carry. So I do practice this draw stroke and I do teach it. If my hands were down, the same thing would happen. They'd come to here, get the jacket out of the way, and off I go. That one is a little slower, but I have to say on the Manus, it was only maybe a tenth, maybe not even that slower than I was. All right. So hands up, hands down. Great with a jacket, but it means for the rest of your life, you have to wear a jacket, a vest, or an open front shirt. That's the sacrifice that goes in requiring this sort of draw stroke, okay? So if I'm gonna wear an untucked shirt, why don't I just drop it over the gun? That's what a lot of us end up doing. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is the slowest draw stroke, okay? Because we have a closed garment and we have the gun on our side. There are two or really three ways I can get my hands to the gun. I can take both hands, grab the garment, drive up here, come back to the gun. That is significantly the slowest one of the three, all right? It's called robust, which means it's less likely to fail. I do a lot of force on force. I haven't seen that necessarily be 100% true, but people feel like if they get two hands on the, the garment, it's better. High-speed video, we see one trailing and one leading, so maybe you're not really getting two hands on. But the draw hand has to come way past the gun and go back. That's what costs you the time. The other one is the one I like to do is called the pass-off. All right, If my hands are here, I simply pass the shirt off to my left hand so my right hand can go get the gun. It's a real simple procedure. If my hands are up, I pass it off, my hand's here waiting, and I go and get the gun. 
If I grab with this hand and pull forward, I tend to wrap it around the butt, making the draw stroke much slower. I haven't found that one to be particularly effective, this kind of reach over and pull, because the way your elbow works, you're going to be pulling to the front. You, it's really hard to pull this way and not hook the gun. So my pass off technique looks like this. Find that works pretty well. Some people will prefer just to use the, uh, the strong side, only the strong hand, only to go and get the gun. It'll look like this. They make a circle, they come back, they go and get the gun, and then they get both hands on the gun. Particularly useful if you tend to use flashlights or you're going to be engaged with this hand in a different manner. I like it a lot. I don't think it's any slower than the two hand position. It's right there at it. But you've got to make sure that you get really good at circling that shirt out of the way. All right. I know a trainer, John Holsham, who I respect immensely, a lot of real world experience. That's how he does it. So that's something good to know. Okay. But this will be the slowest one on the Manus. It was a one four for me. Now, lots of things come into that. I don't practice this style of draw stroke because if I was going to untuck my shirt, I'd simply carry appendix. No advantage for me. Okay. The reason I end up carrying appendix is I can carry a much bigger gun in this position but I have to have something that's really important. I have to have a dedicated holster to appendix style draw. You simply can't buy a holster and make it appendix. There's quite a few things that go into making a good appendix holster, and you're going to have some things that you'll need to do to make it work. Almost always people say it's uncomfortable. Yep, strong side two is uncomfortable. A lot of pressure on the hips. Um, all of it's uncomfortable. There are advantages. I can defend the gun in the front much easier than I can from the side. I can draw in a seated position for appendix, which is a huge advantage, okay? Uh, if I roll on my side, my gun's not stuck, or if it's on my back, it's not trapped underneath me. There are some disadvantages too, though. I have to change my draw stroke from what it was originally here and refine that. I also have to be aware that it's available to my opponent in front of me and learn some defensive techniques to that. So either way, there's gonna be a compromise with these things. If you look at this holster, it's got a wedge on the back. That makes the muzzle rise off my pelvis. It's got a wing on the side, which tucks the, tucks the butt to the side. And it's, it's set up with these discrete carry concept clips, which are the best clips by far. They really connect it to the belt and they keep it on there. Big fan of those, either separate or as in a mono block. Here you'll see my everyday carry. People don't believe that, but that's what I carry on a daily basis. Got the Dark Star wing on the JM Custom Kydex. I got discrete carry concept clips and I've got a Dark Star wedge on the back. So I'm hitting everybody's uh, different stuff. The reason I carry a gun like this is it's wider. It sits more comfortably on my pelvis because we have nine shapes of pelvises. They're all different for everybody. I use a light on it. Plus, I like a longer barrel since it doesn't flip over. If you're running a really short pistol, appendix doesn't work very well because it wants to flip over the top. So you're going to have to make an adjustment. From this position, if I go to get the gun, I can do the same thing. Both hands and then the other hand goes back and gets the gun. All right. One hand and that hand gets the gun or just the right hand by itself goes and gets the gun. Okay, so this is the slowest and people tend to drive up to here, making the shirt being very elastic, which allows it to drive all the way back to the gun. This one tends to be the fastest and this one tends to be somewhere in between. I practice this one also because of flashlight techniques or engaged fighting techniques. I have to have a single hand draw. Let's see what that looks like from the side. If my hands are up, I go to the belly button, I pinch the shirt out of the way and I grab the gun and off I go. Okay, notice I didn't go to the hem of the shirt because they're all different. I'm going to some place where I know I can get a hold of the gun and do that, okay? My hands are down, simply cross, grab the hem of the shirt, move it out of the way, and then draw the gun. Now, it's apparent that I spend a lot more time drawing from appendix than other positions, and I realize that. So that does color the, the video, but I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you to get out there and measure and refine and perform these things so that you can make a good decision. People tend to pick one side or the other, and it's, it's live or die with that side. I carry strong side open when the environment says I have to. And I practice enough to be very good at it and to recognize that. Before I leave in the morning, if I'm going to carry with a jacket on strong side, I perform all my draws from there to condition myself to be able to do that. We're only talking about this much difference, so it doesn't make a tremendously huge difference. But this one has to cover a little more distance, so I like to warm it up. Most of my life, since I own my own business, this is what I do for a living, I walk around with a shirt untucked. It's very common in today's culture to have your shirt on top. It's comfortable. I like it, all right? Conceals a very large gun. This is a P30L 
fairly well. All right, doesn't mean that it's concealed from everybody. Uh, law enforcement's going to see it, and bad guys are always going to see your concealed gun. If you have to really conceal a gun, it's going to take something that makes it very hard for you to get to it. There's no way to do that. But maybe uh, John and Sarah with their new Enigma at Filster is going to change that paradigm a little bit. They've done a great job of working on that. So maybe we're going to have a little different holster criteria. Those are the ways you can get to concealment. Let's look at the numbers. So I measured my strong side was a 0.7. And then when I got on the, uh, on the Mantis, it was a 1.4 from closed. All right, so that means it took me double the time to get the gun out. That's what concealment cost me on a closed garment, strong side. Open garment from strong side, 0.7 was my number. It took me a 1.2 to get to it. And remember, reaction time's mixed in there somewhere. We're just kind of washing it out. So it only took me a half a second more to go and clear that gun. From the appendix, tends to be a 0.8 or a 0.9 for me right now, more frequently a 0.9, so we'll stick with that number. So a 0.9 to get it out, it goes from a 0.6 to a 0.9, so it costs me three tenths of a second to be able to get that gun out. Now I know what it's gonna cost me. If fumbles are involved, or I need a bit more visual patience, I'll know how long it takes my draw to happen. And if I'm in a real life situation, then I'll know whether I can draw my gun appropriately and effectively and efficiently relative to the contextual environment. Okay, guys, once again, I'm not telling you what to do. It's your life, you choose. I have never come on this channel and said everybody should carry appendix or strong side or red dots. What I want you to do is get better at what you do, okay? You're making a judgment call. We have had a huge upgrade in the last 10 years in holsters, straight up. Holsters are so much better, so much quicker. We have so many good people making holsters now that you can find something that works for you. Unfortunately, the really good holster makers tend to be custom because they have a custom crowd where the general holster makers are making guns that kind of do something generally well and fit a lot of guns. And that's what gun stores are going to sell you. So you're going to have to make some sort of commitment. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking about 70 to to $100 for a good holster that will last for years and years and years of use. Okay. It's not a bad investment. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. No, it's a long video. This is a big subject. I could spend a lot more time. I feel like I rushed through it anyway. But as always, remember, measure, refine, and perform.